Welcome to B Plus Overland, where we share with you all of the upgrades and changes we've made to our B Plus RV for full time off grid living and a trip down the Pan American Highway from Alaska to Argentina. Ours is a 2021 LTV Wonder Rear Twin Bed. That's the B Plus in the back, and it's built upon a 2020 Ford Transit 350 HD cutaway van with rear dually wheels. Come check it out. I'm going to share with you how we upgraded our three-way absorption refrigerator freezer for overlanding. Um, that is living off the grid for extended periods of time and uh, by three-way I mean that it can be powered by propane, by 12 volt uh, DC or by 110 AC. So before I get into sharing all the upgrades we did, I did want to uh, let you know how we actually power ours. Um, ours is a Series 10 Dometic. It's got a small freezer up top and a good size refrigerator down below. It's big for an overlanding vehicle, but we really enjoy it. Um, in terms of powering it, 110 works if you're plugged in, but we really never are. And inverting from our, even our 600 amp hour uh, battery bank, it's just not efficient. Um, it'll work on DC 12 volt, but again, it's not a very efficient way for us to do it. Um, it takes a lot of amps to do that. Um, so the most efficient by far is propane. It's really the only way we run it unless we've got a propane issue uh, like we're out. Um, we can run on one tank of propane if we're just cooking and running the fridge even in tropic uh, weather. I mean hot weather. Uh, we can go almost a month without having to uh, fill up on propane and we've got a 13 gallon internal tank and remember you can only fill those to 80 percent so you know you're you're getting uh, shy of uh, 10 gallons you know call it 10 gallons so we're running a month uh, on 10 gallons and keeping things uh, nice and cold if we're up in alaska or up in the mountains uh, in the Andes, uh, we might run the heat, um, which runs off, off of the propane. Um, that can use up a lot of fuel if it runs all night. Uh, the water heater that we have on board is super efficient, um, the Aqua Pro, and um, it, it's just not a factor. So, propane is the way to go for us um, when it comes to overlanding. Gives us a lot of freedom. Okay, let's jump into the upgrades, and I'm going to just go straight to the heart of it, to a product that all of the different upgrades I did ties into. Um, it is a product that's called Fridge Defend. It's by a company called ARP. These guys are engineers, and they have this thing figured out. Um, so let me show you the product. It is hardwired into the system, and it's right here. There you go. And um, they made this to help optimize both Dometic brands and uh, NorCal brands. So um, what this thing does, the first thing that it does um, is it monitors the temperature of the liquids that are circulating in the system. And if the fridge was tilted and it started to overheat because of it being physically tilted, it monitors that. You can program the temperature you want it to shut off with, and when it reaches that temperature, it simply just shuts the fridge off and the, and the, um, the temperature comes down and no damage happens. So it's a fail safe. I mean, we, we really try not to rely on it, but if we flew home and forgot to level the van and left the fridge on for some strange reason, um, at least we know the fridge defense should be turning it off and the fridge will work when we get home. Um, so phenomenal um, way to protect the fridge. So, so getting into the next upgrade, uh, it has to do with removing the heat from the system, which is the primary thing that any refrigerator does. It grabs the heat inside the cooling box, the freezer, and it moves it to the outside, mixes it with the air, and disperses it, and keeps doing that and cycling it. And that's what gets your, uh, your ice box cold. So on a RV like this, or a van, what happens is the fridge is installed inside here. This is the intake down here, so fresh air comes in. It goes through uh, the coils that are here that are hot, that have pulled the heat out of the fridge. 
the air passes over it, captures that heat, and then comes out right up here through the exhaust. So if the air is stagnant, um, if it's not moving, if you've got a breeze coming over the van that's twirling and pushing air in the outlet box, there are all different ways that air won't move well through this space. And the only thing I had stock was this little tiny fan they had in there. So what the uh, fridge defend allows me to do is it has a second thermometer and it will monitor the temperature inside uh, right on the coils and you can program what temperature you would like additional fans to come on. Um, so they sell uh, what is a giant like computer type fan and I'll show you. Um, this is the first one and it spins and it sits on a piece of sheet metal. Uh, it's a bracket that I had made and I just screwed it in here, mounted it. It draws the air in this way and shoots it up into this cavity and right against those coils and up towards um, the exhaust up here. And again, it's controlled by this unit. When this unit senses that the coils are starting to get hot, whatever I programmed it, boom, this thing comes on and starts sucking air and shooting it up and it's pushing that hot air. And then to be super efficient, what I did is I built another bracket and I installed a second one up here that is sucking on the hot air and shooting it out. So I've really got air shooting in, up and out, and I wanted to be able to uh, be able to overcome any sort of a high wind, like when we're on the beach, or any condition that was going to try and prevent air from circulating in there. And you really don't hear them; they're they're computer fans. They're if you've got a chair right there, you might you you know you're going to hear it if your ear's right there, but uh, you get five feet away and you don't hear the fan. So. Um, excellent way to move the heat out of the fridge and get things cold. So I've shared with you how to uh, efficiently move uh, the, remove the heat uh, from the outside vent when you're using an absorption fridge. Now how do you optimize the coolness that you've created inside the ice boxes? This is our uh, freezer up top and our refrigerator down below. And inside of these you're going to see that there is a cold plate in the back with these fins. It's an aluminum and there's going to be the same thing in the top of our fridge right here. And in the old days in your home refrigerator um, in the freezer portion you'd have to defrost it. Um, it's not frostless and that's what happens in the freezer in here. Uh, but in your modern day uh, refrigerator that you have in your house you don't have to do that because the coils, there's no cold plates, the coils, the cold coils run down the walls of the fridge and the freezer. So all the surfaces are cold. Um, there's, no, there's no challenge in terms of distributing uh, the coldness in the box. But when you've got an isolated uh, plate, cold plate, especially like in their refrigerator, you're going to see at the top, well, it can be cold at the top, but if this thing is stuffed full of, of, of food, the stuff at the bottom isn't going to get any uh, much of that coldness. So let me show you how we overcome this. And I'm going to go back to the ARP, um, to the fridge defense. So when that system is on, when it's burning propane and it's trying to make these cold plates cold, the computer senses it and it turns on these fans that I've installed. Now I bought these from Fridge Defend. Um, I did it a little differently. Um, they sell maybe one, possibly two for the fridge. I've installed them in the freezer. Um, we're living in the tropics for extended periods of time, so I need everything to work at 110%. So what happens is um, they only run when the fridge is running, when the fridge is trying to make this plate cold. And when this cold, um, when these are flowing, what happens is the air is sucked up underneath and it has a exhaust right here. And that is uh, pointed over here at the fins. And what that's doing is it's in an effort to circulate the air. It's going up over to the fins and it's driving the air down. And then I've got a second one over here that's pointed in a little bit different direction and it's hitting the fins and driving the air down. This bar that we've installed is spring-loaded 
and it's there to make sure that there is an air space between what we've packed in here and these so that these fans can circulate some air down here. So what does that look like in our fridge? Well, it's the same deal. We've got one cold plate up here and imagine this is just, and it has happened to us, it's just stuffed to the gills with, with uh, groceries and the, the produce bin is full and this gets cold and all that cold air is trapped up here. Well, that's fine for this food, but this stuff down here is not going to stay very fresh. So again, what we've done is we've installed the, these two fans to blow on the coils, drive air down. I've put another bar in here to keep an air space open so the air can continue to be driven down, sucked in, blown across and down, and I get a circulation. Um, the other thing that I've done is this is an aftermarket uh, product um, and I'll put it in the description down below. Um, it is a light sensor, it's a 12 volt light sensor. And what I don't want to happen is when I open this and it's super hot, I don't want those fans to continue to operate and blow cold air out. It's just too hard to regenerate that cold air. I want them to turn off immediately. So this sensor senses these lights and when it does, it opens the circuit and shuts the fans off. And then the minute I close this, the lights go off and if the system's running, the fans will start again. Um, we have found that with the outside vents or uh, fans that we've put on um, and when they're operating and the inside fans here, in the worst conditions, the most humid conditions that we've encountered through Central America, um, we've never actually had to turn the fridge on high. It's always been one or two clicks off of, of that. So it's always been running at the 60 or 80%, but never 100%. And then when we get up in the mountains, we can take it down to the, I think it's like the 40 and 60% um, uh, uh, dial. Um, so really efficient. We've never had a problem putting things, uh, getting things cold. Um, we've never had to, uh, like if we go somewhere and... Um, we've had it turned off. Maybe we flew home for a couple weeks, so we decided to empty the fridge. When we go back to the grocery and fill this up, we just turn it on and throw the groceries in there. There's none of this having to turn it on 24 hours ahead of time and letting the box get cold. This thing is really efficient and it, it gets cold. I, I can't give you a time, but it's we just don't worry about it. Um, just works out so well. So in addition to these upgrades, uh, two tips. Um, for us, uh, we were in the tropics for um, well, over a year um, and it was hot and it was humid and the fridge performed wonderfully. But what did happen is we had a lot of condensation that built up here uh, around this control and behind there is a circuit board and it was shorting things out and turning the fridge off because it was just short cir circuiting. And I thought I had a bad circuit board. Um, but when I opened this all up eventually and found uh, the moisture, it became apparent to me that it was shorting out. So I was, I was happy the board hadn't shorted out. So the solution was, um, luckily I had a tube of dialectic grease, which is just a clear non-conductive grease. And I smeared all the connections. The entire circuit board is covered in this stuff. And that insulates it from the moisture. Um, and we haven't had a problem since. Um, I will say if you have a plunger controlled um, uh, controller here uh, that has a spring in it, if you put a lot of dialectic grease in there, it can get stuck. So I actually thought it didn't work at first because the plunger was getting stuck and it was kind of half in and shorting out. And eventually I realized, oh, you got to pull the plunger back out. The, the spring wasn't uh, strong enough. So the next thing is, um, and I think this is a good idea for any... Um, any uh, absorption fridge is get a good reliable thermostat um, uh, I mean a thermometer in this case we have a sensor in the uh, freezer and we've had the freezer open a few times while I'm filming and it's right now at 12 degrees Fahrenheit which is fine it's usually in the single digits um, the fridge has jumped up it's at 52 um, we shoot for 42 on average, and it tends to run between 
39 and 44 is kind of where we see it. Um, our happy place is, is uh, again, at around 42. Um, this one runs on batteries, and they've been in there for a year and a half, and we've replaced them once. It has an alarm that goes off to tell us. Um, and there are alarms you can set um, that will wake you up in the middle of the night if your fridge gets warm. By the time we paid for and picked up our rig, I had spent a lot of time on forums getting familiar with the systems on board, um, what the challenges were, what might need to be upgraded, and what the limitations were. Um, one category of product was almost always at the top of the list of problems um, online that people talked about, and that is refrigerators, specifically absorption fridge uh, refrigerators. And, and I knew that uh, from reading through the problems that people had had or the challenges that uh, the way the fridge came stock just wasn't going to work. Um, so when I found the uh, Fridge Defend product, I was so happy because it solved the three um, the three problems that I had. I, and, and I don't I don't build circuitry or a computer, so I didn't know how I was going to put together these systems uh, to help get the heat out to help circulate the cold air and to turn the system off if it got too hot and was about to ruin itself. These guys had already thought it through. Um, I was able to call them as I was installing it. Um, we've used the system uh, without fail except when I had to put the dialectic grease on because it was shorting out. Uh, but in the tropics for over a year, uh, super humid, super hot, never having to run it at 100%, always able to make ice uh, overnight, um, just couldn't be happier with the system. Um, if you're interested in installing one of these, um, I'll share some of the pictures of what I did. I don't have instructions, but I did share my challenges with this specific install with the company, and uh, they have complete instructions on their website.